Hey guys, it's HodgePodge here, and today we're going to be reviewing something I haven't actually reviewed from before, and that is from Creative Beast Studios. Uh, we're doing the Beast of the Mesozoic Raptor series, even though these aren't raptors technically. Well, well I get they. T well, one of them technically is, and this is the Eastern set, and this comes with a Microraptor G, which is Microraptor GUI. And Mono Nihilus? Olicranus. Yeah, there's an unfortunate typo on the box, which is a shame. This should say this should be a K and not an L. Uh, that's a little unfortunate, but <laughs> I, I can't fault them for a, a little typo. You know it's Mono Nihilus. And when we look at the box, look at this beautiful artwork. Beast of the Mesozoic Raptor series, one sixth scale, dinosaur action figures, Eastern set, Micro to G, Mono Nihilus. <laughs> David Silver is the sculptor, and this absolutely gorgeous artwork. If I slip it off. Oops, come on. Uh, where does it say? Art by Shannon Beaumont. Incredible work. And inside the box, we have a collectible card. There we go, Microraptor Mononychus, Small Thief, One Claw, respectively, the definitions of the names. Very cool. Absolutely beautiful artwork. And the rest of the box as well is awesome. But it's awesome. Can't tell which raptor it is. I'm guessing it's um, Velociraptor, but I don't know. Yeah, these are not toys. Age is 15. No, these are proper models. Then on the back we can see the entire Raptor series, of which I haven't actually got any of these yet. These are the first products I've gotten from Creative Beast Studios. Without further ado, you can see the, the figures aren't actually in the box, because I've already unboxed them, but I wanted to show the box anyway. The other contents of it, at least. There's the collectible card, really cool. And then we have the stands for the figures and the bases. We'll talk about those later. In the meantime, we are going to be looking at the figures first. The first of which is, oops, the Microraptor. Okay, and here we have the Microraptor GUI. Microraptor, of course, being a Microraptorine dromaeosaurid theropod dinosaur. That's a mouthful. Lived in China specifically the Laoning province during the Earth Cretaceous 120 million years ago and it's one of the very few examples of a gliding dinosaur that isn't a true bird and as we can see these figures are incredibly articulated uh, I'll get I'll get to that in a second but look at the sculpt accuracy basically nothing to be said We've got an articulated jaw Get a closer look at that oh there we go Apologies if you can hear my dogs in the background. The eye, they almost look a bit cartoony. I think it's just mine, this one looks a bit silly. The interior of the mouth, look at the sharp little teeth, beautifully done. Got a little tongue in there. Uh, the coloration on this figure is just gorgeous. Look at this. the tail, two characteristic uh, feathers on the very end of the tail fan of Microraptor. Um, it's mostly black, as we know Microraptor would have been, iridescent black feathers. But we've also got these blue, these gorgeous blue and white to highlight this. I think this, the idea of these two is that these are meant to be um, male counterparts. And the females are the ones that came with the, um, the scenery sets, like the Microraptor came with the forest accessory set. I didn't have that, it's a little bit pricey for me. As you can see, the underside of the wings, the primaries are white underneath, and then are they white on the top? Yes, they are. And we've got the uh, tiny, tiny uh, hand claws that you can just barely make out. White chest. The wings, the front wings, I should say, are gorgeous. And you can stand it up like that if you want. Now, the back legs, if we see the um, famous raptor feet with the two standing claws, two claw and the one sickle killing claw on the toe. Um, now the back legs are my main point of contention with this, because Microraptor would have glided with all four of its wings spread out, 
in the two front legs and the two back legs, you'd think you could spread it out. Uh, when I spread mine out, uh, that happens. You can see the back legs are a ball and socket joint. Don't worry, it's not broken. Just easily pop it back in. There we go. Yeah, the uh, the back leg articulation isn't quite as wide as you'd want it to be, but then again, I imagine it must have been quite difficult to sculpt it that way. So I'm not really going to fault them that much for it, because it must have been a bit tricky. Yeah, the tail is articulated as well, ball and socket joint. Uh, I usually like to have mine straight out for it to fly, it gives it more um, lift. But yeah, overall, the sculpt on these are amazing. David Silver, you have done an amazing job. It is just wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. Now, my main, I, I don't know if you could say problem, with these products comes with stability. So here we see the uh, the base. We've got some green greenery here and some dirt. I, I, I was about to call it grass, but I know it for a fact it's not grass. Shame on me. Um, I've chosen this one. This uh, this stand to go on top of the base because it seems to be the best one that's worked so far, and this is going to be quite annoying. I've had to put blue tack on because it's the only way to get them to stay up. There we go. So if you spread the wings out like this, you can get some really dynamic poses. It's just getting them to stay up. Now I think the problem is that these bases are too lightly built. They're not very heavy and they're not that great at um, weighing down the uh, the actual model itself. Um, yeah, they're not great at holding the, the the actual model because they can very easily get blown over and um, when the model is way heavier than the base itself it's not ideal but I think that's just a nitpick because once it's on there it's it's alright but it's just a shame that such a brilliant sculpt is kind of pulled down by an issue like stability Okay, next up we have the Mononychus. And just when I thought the Microraptor was perfect, here comes this guy. Or girl. No, no, this is a guy. I said they were males, didn't I? Now, Mononychus is an Alvarez Saurid uh, theropod dinosaur. And Alvarez Saurids are famous for only having one single claw on their hands. And just look at the coloration on this guy absolutely gorgeous. I was blown away when I opened this out of the box. Now of course I've got this guy on a stand because I blue tacked him down and he's standing perfectly now. See this is my point. Uh, once you get them down they are, they are good. So let's take a closer look at this beautiful, beautiful figure. This is one of my favorite figures in my entire collection. It is simply amazing. Apologies if you can hear my dog. So we've got neck articulation, uh, articulated jaw, the eye looks wonderful, and the colours, look at that beautiful red. I don't even know what shade of red, it's like blood red, but it looks gorgeous. We've got black, dark blue, almost like teal cyan around the neck. And then we've got this golden brown on the flanks and the, the tiny little arms are articulated as well. It is just wonderful. And then dark brown on the legs. The legs are articulated but I'm a bit hesitant to move them right now. So yeah, this one doesn't touch the ground, that's why it needs the base. Oh, you can see it wobbling now. Uh, the other one does also move but I'd rather not move it right now. And then look at this tail. It is just amazing, this big tail fan, very big, poofy, wonderful, absolutely gorgeous. Light brown underneath, almost black on the top, incredible. Now watch, I'm not going to be able to get it back on the base now. There we go. Just wonderful. And like I said, it's just such a shame that it's brought down by stability. But that is the only problem with these two amazing 
amazing sculpts. They are beautifully sculpted, beautifully coloured, and how often do we get an Alvarez Saurid figure? How, in fact, how often do we get a Microraptor figure? Not very. And it is so nice to have them. Granted, once you've stuck them down. Now, in terms of the height, we're looking at about... Well, for this base anyway, there are also... Um, there's also the really long stand that you can have. Right, this is going to be a disaster. This one right here. You can see this very long rod. I haven't used that because of the issues I've talked about with these bases. I'm not confident in them holding them up. And I don't want to risk these beautiful figures getting uh, damaged. So, yeah, that, this is going off of the height. There's also ones that you can put directly into the base. but And that's what I used before these ones. But, the, again, the stability. These are the best ones I've worked. These middle ones that hold them by the chest. So, in terms of the height, about 10 centimeters exactly for the Mononychus. And the same for the Microraptor. Now, length is a tricky one, but for the Mononychus, it's about 15 centimeters, and the Microraptor, uh, about just shy of 17 centimeters. And in terms of the width, oops, oh, he's going. <laughs> oh, oh, come on, Microraptor. Okay, there we go. Uh, in terms of the width, at full wingtip, Fully spread wings, uh, that's got a wingspan of 12 centimeters exactly. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, and that's all I have to say about the Beast of the Mesozoic Eastern Pact. These sculpts are gorgeous. They are gorgeously sculpted, painted. It's just a shame about stability. Hopefully, because this is their first run from uh, Creative Beast Studios with these products, Hopefully in the future they will uh, provide more um, stability options or just improve the stability overall. But that is my only complaint about what are wonderful, wonderful figures. Okay, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye now.